Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here with me today. As you can see, my kitchen is in the middle of a renovation. We are painting the cupboards right now and we just decided we have the coat of paint or the two couple of coats of paint um, that we've put on this part of the cupboards, but the doors themselves, we decided to wait 48 hours to allow them to cure really well before we're putting them on. I absolutely love the color though. It's so bright and airy, which is what I was going for. What we had in here before was a really dark kind of, um, I don't even know how you would describe it. It was a color I actually mixed myself with a bunch of different paints, but it was kind of a bluey green, but it was dark. And while I really did love the color, the, the days here in British Columbia during the winter time are very short and very dark. So I wanted to brighten it up a little bit and really happy with this color. It was actually recommended by one of you. Um, it was a Sherwin Williams paint, but we don't have that kind of paint available in our town. So I just bought, brought the color swatch to the paint store that we have available here in our town and matched it up as best that I can, I could. And I really love the way that it turned out. So we're going to be using, at least we think at this point, copper handles on everything, which I think will look really cute and really vintage. And then we are going to use subway tiles for the backsplash, which is going to make it even brighter. And I'm excited about that. We haven't decided yet what we're going to do for the countertop. I actually don't mind this 1970s countertop but it has definitely seen better days. As you can see, there's big chips here and chips all the way along the edge of it and there's cut marks in it and things like that. Uh, but we haven't yet decided what kind of countertop we're going to do. And that is going to be a fairly big project to put on the new countertop. So we'll probably leave that till midwinter at some point. And then for these cupboards up here, I've had a bunch of different ideas over the last few weeks of what I'd like to do with them. One of the things that I wanted to do was to put glass in them, which most people I was talking about this over on Instagram were like, don't do it because they did it thinking same as me that it would make me be able to keep my cupboards a little bit more organized and kind of look cute. But what it ends up looking is dirty because they get splashed on, especially right here by the sink. And then the cupboards, um, the clutter just kind of gives visual clutter. So I've been convinced now that, that, wasn't, that that's not a great idea. Uh, what I was going to do was put glass in them and then paint the inside a different color than the green down here, like maybe a barn red, a really muted barn red or something like that. In the end, we're kind of leaning towards painting the inside of them green like this, just so it's kind of fun to open it up and have a little bit of color in there uh, and then keep the outside of them white. So right now that's what I'm leaning towards, but until I decide for sure, we'll just leave them as they are. I will repaint them in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any ideas of what we should do with these, definitely drop those in the comment section. We're going to make a couple of autumn inspired recipes today. It's actually Halloween for us, although you guys won't see this video until tomorrow. So I am going to make a pumpkin bread pudding. So I have a bread pudding in my recipe book and I'll be using the base of that, but I am going to add a little bit of a cream cheese, whoops, <laughs> a cream cheese kind of frosting to it. I'm also going to add pumpkin butter, which I have thawing on the stove. So that's the pumpkin butter that we made together about three weeks ago now. So I'm going to use that. Normally I put raisins in my bread pudding, but today it's going to be pumpkin inspired. We are also going to be making a pumpkin donut. I made these last year. It's a baked donut and they are so, so good. And then we are going to make a treat that I came across on an account on Instagram called Baked by Melissa. And I was really excited when I saw her make these because they are very similar to a treat that I like to get at Costco that I haven't been able to find the last couple of times I've been there. And that is a pretzel with caramel and chocolate. I think it might even have some nuts in it or something too. It's so, so good. And when I saw her make these quick treats, I thought that the flavor would probably be fairly similar and they could not be easier because they're all just with store-bought junk food. So we're gonna have mini marshmallows, mini chocolate bars, which you can get really inexpensively at the grocery store right now and some mini pretzels. So I'll show you how we're gonna put those together. We're also going to use some store-bought French bread and this is for our bread pudding. So let's get into it. This is a really easy recipe and it's so, so good. 
So the first thing that we're gonna do is grab ourselves a nice big bowl here, but we're gonna have to make some room and we'll put it right there. And we're just gonna rough chop this bread up. Okay, so this is the recipe, the Nana's bread pudding recipe out of my cookbook. So for those of you that ordered the cookbook during the pre-sale in September, you should be starting to receive your cookbooks in the mail now. I have received some emails over the last couple of days saying that people have been getting them, which makes me so happy. Printing took a lot longer this time than it did the last time. And my goal was to have them all shipped out by today, <laughs> by the end of October. But for the orders that are up in Canada, we haven't actually received our cookbooks yet from the printer, although they are on their way here and hopefully we'll be getting them today and we will get those out to you within the next couple of days so you can expect them in the mail within the next week or two but we'll be using like i said the base recipe for the bread pudding out of my cookbook and we need 24 cups for two 9 by 13 trays and i would highly recommend that when you make this recipe that you do make the full amount you can pop one of them in the freezer because it is so good and you'll probably want more of it or your kids will because it's so delicious i love it so we're just going to rip this up i love white french bread from the store so much this recipe is best made the day before and then put in the refrigerator overnight but because I wanted to show you the whole thing start to finish and my kitchen was in utter disarray last night with all of the renovations, I decided I would just make it up this morning and we'll just have the eggs soak in there just enough to kind of soak into the bread and my kids won't care a bit <laughs> that it's, it did not soak overnight, but it is best if you do it that way. So we're gonna rip up all our old bread here eat a little bit of it because mm, it's so good. I have never been able to completely recreate bakery French bread. I make French bread myself and it's always good, but it's never as good <laughs> as this bread. So tasty. Let's see, is our pumpkin butter thawed up yet? Not quite, but it is smelling delicious. This was the first year that I made pumpkin butter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it will definitely be something that I make again year after year because I've already used it two or three times since I made it to flavor muffins and bread and now this pumpkin bread pudding that I'm gonna make today. My oven is preheating to 350 over there. So you're going to need a dozen eggs for this recipe. And I am going to use some pumpkin pie spice that I made up the other day. And the cream cheese, I'm just going to add a little bit of icing sugar and pumpkin pie spice to my cream cheese and mix that up. And I'm actually going to be adding that into it while it's baking. I used to make a pumpkin French toast, which is basically what this is as well. I haven't made it for years, but I did do it like that where I put the cream cheese in, mixed it into it while it was baking and it was really, really good. So I think we might do another half a loaf because I know that my kids will certainly eat up whatever it is I make. Dan's outside right now getting the scaffolding all set up for the putting on the roof on the bunkie that we're building outside. So that's exciting. He was hoping to do it on Saturday, Sunday, I think, but he ended up ratching his knee a little bit with crawling around up there, putting the ceiling on the other day. So he needs to give his knee a couple of days of a break, but it's feeling much better today. So he's gonna get that done. Good thing too, because we are supposed to have some more significant snow. We actually have not had snow yet. I know lots of the country has had, but we have not. So 
um, but we are supposed to get snow on I think Thursday so we need to get that roof on so it's all protected and then we can putter away on the inside of it throughout the winter the goal is to have it all ready to go for well as soon as possible really but definitely for spring let's get a different mixing bowl to mix all of our eggs together so like i said we need a dozen eggs we have a tradition where we go down to my mother-in-law's on Halloween and have a weenie roast. And then there's a big fireworks show that's put on by one of the local fire halls. So we're going to, so we'll head down there this afternoon, a little bit later. Okay, you know, I'm just gonna add an extra couple of eggs since I added a little bit of extra bread there. Add some pumpkin pie spice to those eggs, and we need 10 cups of milk. Oh my goodness, the smell of that pumpkin. Both the pumpkin's pie spice and the pumpkin butter over there. So good. Okay, we're going to add two cups of sugar. four teaspoons of vanilla. Half a teaspoon of salt. Two buttered trays here. Definitely butter them because it will stick. Pack in our bread and then we're gonna pour our egg mixture on top and then add some dollops of, whoops of our pumpkin and our cream cheese. touch of icing sugar to our cream cheese. Little splash of milk just to thin it out a bit. A little bit of cinnamon. We have lots of pumpkin pie spice in there, so I think we'll just do cinnamon and a little splash of vanilla. dollops to this into our bread pudding which just <laughs> smells so ridiculously good oh my gosh it if it tastes even close to as good as it smells pop these in the oven for around half an hour to 45 minutes Okay, let's wipe up our mess here. And we'll put together our little treats here. I'm gonna make a whole bunch to bring down to my mother-in-law's. So we're just going to take our chocolates and Stick them on top of our pretzels. And this is going to be very tedious. Probably would have been better off to just buy a couple of large chocolate bars and just chop them up. <sighs> oh well. I think we're gonna do half an arrow because these are gonna melt out quite a bit, I suspect. 
So we're gonna do some just plain with the chocolate and then we'll do some s'more style with the mini marshmallows. One thing that I find whenever I buy kind of ingredients, prepackaged type of stuff like this, or not necessarily junk food, but just prepackaged food from the grocery store is how much packaging is involved compared to buying bulk, which is what I do primarily. I, because you get the big package that you buy it in, of course, and then I just put divide it out usually into reusable containers that I use year after year. So it is just kind of a, an added bonus to buying bulk that you don't have as much waste. Okay, so got a few more arrows. Maybe I'll do a couple with just the marshmallows too. I think my favorite are going to just be the chocolate, like the arrow with the pretzel. Kind of having to put the marshmallow beside the Kit Kat here because it doesn't stay on top. Do these look yummy? <laughs> yeah. You excited? As far as ease of actually putting these together, the Kit Kats work really well because they're square. The arrow, not so much. A little bit more tricky. You know what I'm thinking is that these would be a lot easier to do putting the top ones on, which maybe was what Melissa did. If I didn't mention it, this was from Baked by Melissa on Instagram, this idea. Um, but it would be a lot easier to put them in the oven and have them start melting and then put the top one on, like push it down into it rather than trying to balance it like this because it's going to be tricky to get this into the oven without all of these falling off. So I think I'll do that with the rest of them and we'll see how it goes. Now I am going to freeze dry <laughs> the rest of these mini marshmallows that I have here and then we can use them for hot chocolate in the winter time. I looked into whether you can freeze dry little mini chocolates like this, but I'm going to look and see if you can, because if you can, I'll also freeze dry those. Okay, so apparently chocolate does not freeze dry well, which makes sense because it has high fat and low, low moisture content, but it says that you can freeze dried Snickers. You know what? Since you can freeze dry Snickers, I am just gonna throw a bunch of them in there and try. Let's see how it goes. It's not gonna ruin them. We'll do Kit Kats. We'll do Coffee Crisp. Worst thing that'll happen is we'll just have to eat them right away. So I can't see that it's going to ruin them at all. I haven't actually done a lot of experimenting with freeze drying candies and things like that that a lot of people do. We don't generally eat a ton of candy and I'm not crazy about food dyes in food. So a lot of the things that you see people kind of experimenting with freeze drying are things like Skittles and stuff like that that have a lot of food dye in them. So it's not something I've played around with much. But the freeze dried marshmallows definitely make good sense for doing hot chocolate in the winter time. And we're talking about making hot chocolate, like freeze drying hot chocolate powder too. So we'll um, experiment with that a little bit. So I've decided that I am going to chop these little chocolate bits in half because I think they'll probably freeze dry better that way. I'll let you know how this goes in the next video because I do have my freeze dryer filled with onions right now. And that's gonna take probably 24 hours or so before they're done and then we'll have to do these. Okay, 
chocolates, marshmallows. chocolate pretzel bites are ready. So definitely putting them in, letting them get melty, and then putting the other pretzel on top is the way to go for sure. So we're going to double this recipe for our uh, donuts that we're gonna make. And I'm using these silicone donut, baked donut um, tray things, <laughs> I guess that you'd call them. So you do need to put these on a cookie tray though. And you also need to oil them really well. I found that last year, I thought you could just put the batter right in there and they would pop right out. Nope, not the case. So a little bit of melted butter with a pastry brush is a good way to do it. And then to put the actual batter into your molds, I'm just gonna use a Ziploc bag, put my batter in and then just squeeze it into it. It works a lot easier than trying to scoop it in. Okay, we need, this recipe is from Sally's Baking Recipes. It's so weird, I don't have all my drawers in to grab all my stuff, everything's sitting over on the table. Uh, we need, okay, one, three and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, some cinnamon, two teaspoons, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, mix that together and then we'll add our wet ingredients, one cup of vegetable oil. In this case, I'm using olive oil, which is pretty much what I use for everything. One and a half cups of brown sugar two thirds a cup of milk, teaspoon of vanilla. Let's try one of our little candy bites. Yeah, that's very good. What would even be better is caramel chocolate bar because then you'd have the caramel in there as well. How's it going out there, a little chilly? It's a little frosty, is it? One is good. Oh, two is even better. Thank you. I thought I was out of eggs, but there's some nice warm eggs from the chicken coop to throw in there. Okay, and we're going to add some of our pumpkin, canned pumpkin, and mix that in. All right, smells so good. Of one of the ones that have a crispy crunch inside and I almost broke my tooth. So apparently when you heat up a crispy crunch, the inside of it goes like rock solid. <laughs> so maybe don't use crispy crunch. The arrow is probably the best and I think caramel would be the absolute best. I'm just melting some butter so that I can butter up my donut trays. Okay, I said I was gonna use a Ziploc, but I'm not gonna use a Ziploc. <laughs> I'm just going to fill them up. I'll make the two wheels. 
Okay, we're just gonna wait for our um, pudding to come out of the oven and then we'll pop these in. Okay, so one of my kids tried the crispy crunch and said that it was fine. So I must have got a random one. So let's see. Still pretty crunchy, but it didn't almost break my tooth that time. Do you like the crunchy part? <laughs> I just made a simple glaze with icing sugar, butter, vanilla, and a little bit of milk. So all I'm going to do is take our little cute donuts, dip them in, These baked donuts can be a little bit soft. So just be gentle with them when you're doing the glaze. Ooh, <laughs> that one is going to fall apart. So we'll just leave that one like so and drizzle some on it. Ooh top of that one fell off too. Whoops. The first ones that I took out, I uh, had some issues with getting them out so that they were all looking nice still. Look at that cute little donut. It's adorable. I think it's actually done. Our Pudding is now done. I'm gonna scoop up some and show you. Let's try a bite. It's very, very hot. Mm. That is scrumptious. My favorites are like the crusty part around the outside of it. Mm. Yeah, for me personally, that was a little bit too sweet. So because the pumpkin butter had sugar in it, the um, cream cheese had sugar in it, and then the bread pudding itself had sugar in it, that was definitely too sweet for me. So if I were to do it again like that, I would put um, just pumpkin puree, not pumpkin butter in it, and a little bit less sugar in the main pudding. Uh, if I wanted to keep the cream cheese topping because the cream cheese topping was really yummy. So I am going to give a little try to one of these really cute little donuts. I may have already eaten some of the crumbs off of it and it's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Delicious. This is a really nice recipe because it's not too sweet at all. It's really, really good. Yum. I don't know if any of you have found this, but I find that the older I get, the less I can handle a lot of sweets. And I definitely feel like that was more than enough sweets for me. But remember how I was saying that I, what I would do to change that, to make it less sweet? All my kids said it was awesome, but that it needed more topping on the top. So more of the cream cheese topping, which I thought was really funny. Anyway, I think that is it for today's video. We are going to get ready to head into town and enjoy the fireworks and a weenie roast. I hope that you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you again next time. Bye.